who was Mao Tse Tung. Mao Tse Tung served as chairman of the People's Republic of China from 1949 to 1959, and led the Chinese Communist Party from 1935 until his death. Mao's Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution were ill-conceived and had disastrous consequences, but many of his goals, including stressing China's self-reliance, were generally laudable. Early Life in the late 19th century, China was a shell of its once glorious past, led by the decrepit Qing dynasty. Mao Tse Tung was born on December 26, 1893, in the farming community of Shaoshan, in the province of Hunan, China, to a peasant family that had tilled the three acres of land for several generations. Life was difficult for many Chinese citizens at the time, but Mao's family was better off than most. His authoritarian father, Mao Zedong, was a prosperous grain dealer, and his mother, Wen Kimei, was a nurturing parent. While Mao attended a small school in his village when he was eight years old, he received little education. By age 13, he was working full-time in the fields, growing increasingly restless and ambitious. At the age of 14, Mao Tse Tung's father arranged a marriage for him, but he never accepted it. When he turned 17, he left home to enroll in a secondary school in Changsha, the capital of Hunan province. In 1911, the Xinhua Revolution began against the monarchy, and Mao joined the Revolutionary Army and the Kuomintang, the Nationalist Party. Led by Chinese statesman Sun Yat-sen, the Kuomintang overthrew the monarchy in 1912 and founded the Republic of China. Spurred on by the promise of a new future for China and himself, Mao reveled in the political and cultural change sweeping the country. Moved toward communist ideology. In 1918, Mao Tse Tung graduated from the Hunan First Normal School, becoming a certified teacher. That same year, his mother died, and he had no desire to return home. He traveled to Beijing, but was unsuccessful in finding a job. He finally found a position as a librarian assistant at Beijing University and attended a few classes. At about this time, he heard of the successful Russian Revolution, which established the Communist Soviet Union. In 1921, he became one of the inaugural members of the Chinese Communist Party. In 1923, Chinese leader Sun Yat-sen began a policy of active cooperation with the Chinese communists, who had grown in strength and number. Mao Tse Tung had supported both the Kuomintang and the Communist Party, but over the next few years, he adopted Leninist ideas and believed that appealing to the farming peasants was the key to establishing communism in Asia. He rose up through the ranks of the party as a delegate assemblyman and then executive to the Shanghai branch of the party. Death of Sun Yat-sen and the Long March In March 1925, Chinese President Sun Yat-sen died, and his successor, Chiang Kai-shek, became the chairman of the Kuomintang. Unlike Sun Yat-sen, Chiang was more conservative and traditional. In April 1927, he broke the alliance and began a violent purge of the communists, imprisoning or killing many. That September, Mao Tse Tung led an army of peasants against the Kuomintang, but was handily defeated. The remnants of the army fled to Jiangxi province, where they reorganized. Mao helped establish the Soviet Republic of China in the mountainous area of Jiangxi and was elected chairman of the small republic. He developed a small but strong army of guerrilla fighters, and directed the torture and execution of any dissidents who defied party law. By 1934, there were more than 10 regions under the control of the communists in Jiangxi province. Chiang Kai-shek was getting nervous about the success and growing numbers. Small raids and attacks on outlying communist strongholds had not discouraged them. Chang reasoned it was time for a massive sweep of the region to eliminate the communist influence. In October 1934, Chang amassed nearly one million government forces and surrounded the communist stronghold. 
Mao was alerted to the impending attack. After some intense arguing with other leaders, who wanted to conduct a final stand against the government forces, he convinced them that retreat was the better tactic. For the next 12 months, more than 100,000 communists and the dependents trekked west and north in what became known as the Long March across the Chinese mountains and swampland to Yan'an, in northern China. It was estimated that only 30,000 of the original 100,000 survived the 8,000-mile journey. As word spread that the communists had escaped extermination by the Kuomintang, many young people migrated to Yan'an. Here Mao employed his oratory talents and inspired volunteers to faithfully join his cause as he emerged the top communist leader. Japanese-Chinese conflict and Mao's rise to power. In July 1937, the Japanese Imperial Army invaded China, forcing Chiang Kai-shek to flee the capital in Nanking. Chiang's forces soon lost control of the coastal regions and most of the major cities. Unable to fight a war on two fronts, Chiang reached out to the communists for a truce and support. During this time, Mao established himself as a military leader and, with aid from Allied forces, helped fight the Japanese. With the Japanese defeat in 1945, Mao Tse-tung was able to set his sights on controlling all of China. Efforts were made, by the United States in particular, to establish a coalition government, but China slid into a bloody civil war. On October 1, 1949, in Tiananmen Square, Beijing, Mao announced the establishment of the People's Republic of China. Chiang Kai-shek and his followers fled to the island of Taiwan, where they formed the Republic of China. Over the next few years, Mao Tse-tung instituted sweeping land reform, sometimes through persuasion and other times through coercion, using violence and terror when he deemed it necessary. He seized warlord land, converting it into people's communes. He instituted positive changes in China, including promoting the status of women, doubling the school population and improving literacy, and increasing access to health care, which dramatically raised life expectancy. But Mao's reforms and support were less successful in the cities, and he sensed the discontent. In 1956, he launched the Hundred Flowers campaign, and, in democratic fashion, allowed others to express the concerns.